Hi, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. Welcome to my basement workshop. And behind me is the kitchen sink, kitchen cabinets, and countertop. Not because this was ever used as a domestic kitchen, but because it was used as a canning kitchen. A prior home occupant did canning down here. And now I've turned it into a maker's shop. This is an odd angle, odd lighting, and it's because I've positioned the camera so that I can show you my Creality Ender 3 V2 that's been converted using an Ender Extender 400 XL kit to make it into a 400 by 400. In my case, actually, um, the bed dimensions are 410 by 410 millimeters. And I purchased a PEI double-sided, one side smooth, one side textured uh, print uh, magnetic flex plate with the magnetic uh, base. And in case you're thinking about it, I wanted to go ahead and kind of do an unboxing and document, kind of give a review of, of uh, actually applying it to the printer. Now, uh, as you probably know, if you have ever tried to make your own printer or if you've ever tried to upgrade a printer and enlarge its uh, print volume, you'll know that as soon as you get out of the realm of the normal sizes, it can get very expensive. And so this particular uh, build plate set uh, was really about the best price that I could find. And my initial... Um, reaction to receiving it is that it, it looks pretty impressive. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with it. So let me reach over and slide my magical uh, camera stand down so that you can see the printer a little bit better. And this monstrous build surface is what we have paid 70 something dollars for. And again, Pretty good deal compared to $100, $150, $200 for anything equivalent anywhere else. And this particular setup comes with a nice magnetic base that I'll have to pry it off of. And that magnetic base comes with 3M adhesive on it. And this adhesive is listed as 3M 300LSE. And so uh, let me mention that uh, previously I was using uh, just the standard uh, binder clips with a large 410 millimeter by 410 millimeter sheet of just standard glass, like what you would use, like if you were replacing a window in your home, purchased from the big box store. And I simply removed the binder clips and removed the glass, which I might add was poorly cut, had sharp corners and just was worrisome to me. And then I sprayed some 99.9% .9 pure isopropyl alcohol onto the plate and uh, wiped it down real good. Got quite a bit of dust off uh, grime that I couldn't even see and didn't even know was there uh, in hopes of getting a good adherence of this magnetic uh, sheet. And of course, as you're probably aware, the concept here is to get one side of it positioned carefully, then pressed down, and then do the peeling for the rest. At least that's my, my thinking on this. My first time to ever do this and I think I didn't quite peel enough off. But I managed to get a hold to it. It 
This is actually great fun. <laughs> as long as you're doing it right and not frustrating yourself with big pockets of air bubbles underneath. Uh, the size is great. If anything, I think it's a slightly ample. I'll measure it in just a moment to see whether it's my aluminum that is small or whether this uh, magnetic plate is actually a little bit oversized. I should also add that for better performance on printing large items, which is really why I wanted this, I was looking for a nice affordable way to print really large items quickly. And so I replaced the, uh, the extruder and hot end uh, with a uh, direct drive extruder and hot end from Micro Swiss and I've been pretty happy with it. You're looking at the back of the printer now, and one of the things that I'll point out to you while we're looking on the back is that I developed a, I designed my own strain relief piece here, but one of the problems that I have is that when the bed moves all the way forward in the Y axis, this cable drops down below the stepper motor. And then when it's coming back, it can actually go underneath the stepper motor and bind up right there. So I'm going to be designing a little 3D printed flare that will go off the stepper motor some distance under there. It's on the side that doesn't have the end stop, so it won't be a problem, but it will just keep this cord up in the air so that when it comes back, it can move back without any problem. Uh, let me also spin the printer around to the front to show you that I designed my own uh, 3D printed case for a uh, big tree tech uh, control board that I've got mounted in there. I also uh, 3D printed um, dual stepper motor uh, holders and 3D printed this um, dual Z uh, lead screw uh, holder for the far side so that now this big monster has dual Z. Okay, so from here, you can see the new direct drive um, extruder and the new hot end. This is a 3D printed uh, case, uh, fan case. I had to jury rig um, because this is not a BL touch this is actually a CR touch, and the CR touch mounts differently than a BL touch. This was designed, I uh, found this, I think, on Thingiverse or maybe printables, but it was designed for a BL touch, and I had to actually break off its mounting arm and manufacture one of my own out of a little piece of sheet metal to get this mounted. But here, this angle is adjustable for this holder for the Big Tree Tech uh, TFT35. And I've also got, let me move this down so you can see better. I've got uh, two-tone black and red plastic for the touchscreen holder and two-tone black and red plastic for the Big Tree Tech uh, main board. And it's positioned where uh, the USB ports and so forth are easily accessible on the front. You can see beautiful, smooth PEI uh, on this side and textured on this side. And I see my future trying to come up with an easier way to get this thing in place properly on the first try without having to go back and forth on it. But that's not too bad right there. And so that folks is an absolutely enormous print volume. Um, the XL on this means that the top goes up so high that I can actually print, I think, up to 500 millimeters tall. And you might say, well, that's enormous. Whoever prints that tall, uh, and is it even doable? But I've watched videos on the Ender Extender um, website where he was indeed printing enormous objects that were going up really, really tall. Okay, I had promised that I would measure it, and I have indeed, and it is right at uh, exactly 410 millimeters and that is both from front to back and from side to side 
And so it is right spot on at 410 by 410. And I think that means that my aluminum uh, base was just slightly undersized, no big deal. And so next I will be designing that little piece of uh, kind of a flared lip that I'm going to attach. I want to try to attach it in a way that doesn't uh, give any added chance of this stepper motor overheating. Just a little something that will grip the edges here and lead off this way so that this cord uh, will stay up and not get itself pinched going underneath the stepper and then trying to flip back over it again. Here I'm using calipers to take measurements before going to Fusion 360 to model up the part, but I did remember to use the mesh bed leveling system to recalibrate since I have a new print bed now. As you might imagine, it took several iterations, some trial and error to get the right dimensions and the right approach. What you see now is the final product after those iterations. I won't bore you with all those details, but here we are ready to install. This print surface worked wonderfully, exactly as expected. Really pleased with it. Print quality is great. I love how this, this is just El Cheapo black. This is GST 3D El Cheapo black PLA, but I love how when I print it at a little bit higher temperature, it gets this wonderful matte uh, look to it in uh, most places on the print. And did I mention this is going to be a tight fit? So if I have to do a little persuading, I'll use some clamps to do that. But this is going to go on right here. And just like that. We now have an insurance policy against that heat bed wiring getting caught in front of the stepper motor. And I'm thrilled with how that has turned out. And so with that said, I'm on to print actually two or three more parts to help improve this Ender Extender 400 XL. Uh, but um, I'll go ahead and sign off. If you've enjoyed the video, please uh, click like and consider hitting subscribe. Again, this is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio. And until the next video, I wish you happy making.